Hello, I'm Chris Brown, Fleet Group Editor, and welcome to the very first episode of Fast Forward Interview Series. Fast Forward is about connecting with leaders in fleet, tech, and automotive to show what the future holds for fleets of all types. In our first episode, I interview Steve Horniak, Chief Revenue Officer for Bright Drop. But before we begin, remember to follow and connect with us on social media. Be sure to subscribe to the Fleet Forward YouTube channel so you don't miss future episodes of Fast Forward. And hey, feel free to drop us a comment on the channel. Okay, let's get into it. Well, Steve, hey, welcome to the first edition of Fast Forward. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here and uh, I'm uh, welcoming the ability to set the bar, whether it be low or high for your first video recording and video podcast. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. Hey, let's get right into it. Um, just for the uninitiated, just give us a uh, level set us on what Bright Drop is. So what Bright Drop is doing is looking at bringing smarter, greener, more efficient way to uh, deliver goods and services to that first and last mile and that first and last hundred yards. And we're doing that through an entire platform and ecosystem of products and services that are 100% electrified. So Bright Drop is backed by General Motors. Uh, they're our partner. So they're our manufacturing partner. They're our financial partner, but we are an independently operating company, but we get all the benefit of this massive experience global manufacturer in vehicles and infrastructure and service and go to market combined with the speed and dynamics that we can do as being a, uh, I'll, I'll say a startup technology company. Perfect. Got it. Uh, I want to get to product, but before we do it, keeping on this subject, um, talk about how you're going to approach a dealer base. Absolutely. So as you know, General Motors has a vast and experienced, knowledgeable dealer base throughout the U.S. and Canada, and we most certainly will be leveraging that. So we are going to be uh, very selective in uh, in the dealers that we are bringing on board, and we'll have a lot of announcements about that and how we are going to market through the dealer network um, in the near future. So uh, let's talk about uh, the truck and the pallet. Um, well, first of all, the pallet seems uh, a really like an interesting play. I, I haven't seen anything like it uh, in the market. Um, how is this going to like play into your plans? It is. What's kind of cool about it is it's actually a separate product that we can bring to market with or without the truck. So if you think about it, packages need to be moved. Products need to be moved. And what people are doing today is let's use an example in, in, uh, in, in a city where you've got a FedEx truck pulling up and it's loaded with packages and you've got high density, whether it's commercial or residential building, and they literally are pulling up and they're having to run these packages out. They're sitting there idling on the side of the road. And it might take them six, 10, 12 trips to go back and forth to the, to the truck as they're running back and forth. So imagine if you just reinvent that whole process and say, let's bifurcate that. Let's break that between this last mile and the last hundred yards, right? Let's break that in half and let's bring the products there on the electric vehicle or even traditional vehicles with the, the EP1 will work with additional uh, regular vehicles as well. Drop off the, the EPs, the, the, um, the EP1s off, drop them off at the location. They're secured, you know where they are and they can be remotely controlled and accessed. So you drop them off, now the truck pulls away. Now you're reducing your idle time on the side of the road by 95%, right? That's what our tests have shown. You're reducing tickets, you're reducing emissions for idling, et cetera. Now you've got a group of runners on the ground, right? So you've got drivers and runners versus one person just doing the whole thing, bifurcated drivers, runners. The runners will then take the packages out. And we found that in that mode, they can get about 25% more packages delivered per person. Mm. Um, out there so then you have and it's also better for health because now you you can take up to 250 pounds per uh container so think of these little rolling containers secured containers um they're they're electrified right so they they move with the person so you're not having issues with back with pushing with uphill with gurneys with uh, all the different things that you would typically have in moving large volumes of packages from truck to doorstop so that's where the uh, the EP the uh, the electronic pack 
uh, palette mover fits in. So, hey, let's talk about the, um, the Bright Drop uh, EV600. Um, obviously, that's a cubic feet of the vehicle, uh, or, or the cubic feet of space, actually, in that. Right. Yeah, why, um, why did you settle on 600 cubic feet, let's say? Uh, absolutely. So we went through extensive research and real world testing with uh, a bunch of partners in determining what was going to be the first go to market size and variant of our uh, electrified vehicle. And the EV600 uh, came out to be by far uh, the number one product by choice for the target market, the initial target target market being US and, uh, and Canada, ultimately. Um, so it, it just it, it had the best match of, of range, price, and volume um, that was demanded or needed by the market, particularly in light of what's happening today with the uh, increased demand on bringing more products uh, out to the field faster. Okay, yeah, great. And now uh, we talk about range. Uh, there are some targeted range that uh, are gonna make some fleets pretty happy there. Um, can you talk about range generally? Have you introduced uh, battery specs yet, or when can we expect that? Um, so we'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll be bringing full specs out. All I can say is right now is that the range is going to be absolutely class leading. So we've determined that um, we would rather come to market with the initial version of being of a higher range um, vehicle. Uh, to allow for a lot more flexibility and, and in a number of ways. If you think about it, infrastructure is going to be one of the biggest inhibitors uh, to rolling these vehicles out. So if you've got a higher range vehicle, it may not need to be charged every day, right? So maybe you only need to charge it every three days. So now you, you know, if you were limited by having 20 or 30 vehicles because of infrastructure at one location, maybe you could have 100 vehicles at that same location. Are you eyeing any other use case types at this point beyond last mile uh, that the Bright Drop uh, 600 would be appropriate for? Yeah, absolutely. We've had a number of people and the demand is off the charts. I mean, you know, we, we've announced, uh, obviously we announced uh, a couple of the initial customers, FedEx being, uh, being one of them. Um, but the demand is off the charts and we are seeing people asking for different derivative versions or usage of this. The vast majority of it is, I'll call it product delivery. It may not be just packages, but product delivery. And whether it be B2B or B2C, uh, you know, business to business or business to consumer, we're seeing demands for both, um, you know, and also with intra, intra brands. So even within companies that just want to bring product from, I'll call it regional facilities to local facilities. Um, we're seeing a lot of demand for that as well. So I think you're going to see a lot of um, use der derivative uses of it with the first and highest demand being obviously that last mile um, of on-demand e-commerce package delivery. Um, that's kind of the, the where there's a lot of emphasis now only because there's, it's a growing sector and there's a huge demand for vehicles there. Any, any thoughts on what that realistic timeline is in terms of, you know, no, no, absolutely. So we, you know, we have announced that we will be delivering our first vehicles um, to FedEx by the end of the year. And uh, you even saw in a press release recently that we are outsourcing some of the initial deployment of uh, development of those products um, to a to a partner. Kuka is going to be manufacturing those initial lower volume uh, vehicles for us. And that I'll tell you what we have set. We basically have drawn a line, and we are absolutely marching to that and we will be delivering these vehicles on time on schedule and from there moving over into and again as we've announced moving into um the uh, and over in ingersoll where we will be uh, building um the vehicles in um in mass quantity and that'll happen by the end of uh by the end of next year we'll be bringing that plant that facility online hey to finish up let me just uh ping you with uh one last thought, if you can kind of ruminate on this on the spot, frankly. So um, what would you, what would be one little morsel to counsel a, a fleet about when they're starting their process to go EVs? Uh, maybe something they shouldn't sleep on or something that, you know, is, is maybe not something they're thinking about straight away, but something that they probably should have. Absolutely. I, I think the first thing is, is move now. You know, people keep saying, when is the time to go? The time to go is now. So EVs are not of the future, they're of the current. 
you know, they're here, they're here now, and the world is absolutely moving to it. In fact, everyone's being forced to move it because of missions. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and who you're going to move with. So move now, you're going to have to put the infrastructure in place, right? So the infrastructure does take time depending upon your local jurisdiction. Um, you know, it can take anywhere from months to, to over a year to get the proper infrastructure in place if you're going to go big, right? You can go smaller uh, with smaller fleets and, and be fine with some of the existing infrastructure. But my big advice to people is, is think about strategically, jump in now. If you, if you plan to go here at all, and again, everyone has to put a plan together now, you can do it as an evolution versus a revolution. Um, and, and, and start bleeding these in from, you know, a percentage of your new vehicle purchases uh, versus replacement. So, you know, if you're buying X new vehicles, I would say, let's think about buying 10% of X now and build that up to 50% of X pretty quickly. Wow, great. Well, uh, Steve, this is a really great information. And I want to thank you for uh, really taking part in the first uh, fast forward. So thank you so much for your input. No, my pleasure. Thank you very much for having us on. And uh, we look forward to sharing additional information with you and the market as, uh, as we move forward.